Hello, this is Christian. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a, um, an instance of, your, of the SQL Server on your Macintosh using Docker. And then I'll show you also how to connect to that SQL Server using a program called uh, SQL Operations Studio. Then next, I'll show you how to connect to a, a database. Actually, actually, we're going to attach a database called AdventureWorks 2016 to that instance. And then uh, just in case that if we need to reinstall or reboot that instance, we need to do that as well. So I'll show you how to do that in step six. Okay, so first things first, um, make sure that Docker is installed and running. Let me go ahead and re hide my little thing here first. Okay, so as you can see, the little symbol here on my Mac, it, it's, I have a, um, a Docker for desktop is running. It's a really lightweight version only. So it's it's running here right now. You can also check your terminal, make sure it's running by clicking the terminal. And in here, just type docker-v to show you the version it's working or not, okay? Um, and then if you want to check if you have any instances running, type in docker space ps, and then we'll list all the instances right at this point. As you can see, I don't have anything here, so it's blank. Um, if you want to see all the previous versions or um, containers, you can do PS and then dash A for all. And it should list all here as well. I pretty much, you know, removed everything. So I started from fresh, very clean. So you can see that there is nothing here. Okay. So the first thing we need to do is we need to create this instance. And this is how you do it. So I put a note here. You only do this once unless you you know, want to create multiple versions or multiple instances of SQL Server, then you do that. Because each time you create, uh, Docker will create a unique container ID for that instance. And that instance of that ID will exist there until you delete Docker or until you remove them uh, and so forth. Okay, so I'll show you how and where they, what those are. So first I'm gonna copy this line, it's a really long line of code uh, to run. So just copy that and we're gonna paste it into the terminal here. Okay, I'm gonna just paste right in here. And just make sure that this is a single line, okay, single statement. If, you, if it's not, it may not work. So, okay, so just hit enter. And then you see it's really quick, so that's done. And now if we go back and we type in Docker PS, you will see that now that container is being created. It's a really long uh, a list, so, you can see that the line actually wraps here. Uh, I can't, you know, see everything here. But the very first thing you see here is the container ID. Okay, so this ID here is referring to this ID right here. It's a, I don't know how many characters, but it's a quite long. So that ID is, is created and at the port number here and so on. Okay, so if you want to create it again, for example, I can go up again and I just create again, you know, um, let me go and see if it, if it lets me or not, I'm not sure. Okay, so uh, it tells me that I'm using port 13433, so I can't, I can't use it again, right? So you can only run one at the same time using the same port number unless you change it. But let me do something really quick here. Um, again, I'm gonna show you um, Docker PS. So that's working for now. So we'll, we'll keep that for now, I'll, I'll do that afterwards. Okay, so that's good. And the status is up and running. Uh, it's up here and running. So now the next thing we need to do is go ahead and run the, um, well, we can go ahead and download uh, the, the adventure works first. That's on Blackboard. So if you go over here to Blackboard and I basically just go to the assignment one and download to your machine, okay? So you go over here. Uh, it's in here under the apply or, or to do. So I'm going to download this 2016, you know, dot BAK. And if you just right click on it and um, save link as, or just click download and it should download to your downloads folder. So in my example, I put it inside my downloads folder. You can see that I downloaded here. This is the one I'm, I'm gonna need. Okay, so once that's been downloaded, we need to do the following. We need to go, let me go back to my notes. Okay, we need to copy this adventure works to the Docker container because the Docker container is a virtual machine, right? 
so that you need to copy this database to that container. And we needed to copy to this location right here. Okay, so in a Docker, it would look something like that. And, um, and also, you need to know the container ID, right? The ID that this uh, Docker created for you. This ID right here is um, this ID right here. We need to replace this with that ID and basically copy that to a virtual machine. And so I want to show you where this is and why is it important, okay? So to do that, let's run the SQL Operations uh, Studio and let's connect to that studio first. So if you don't have any connection, you're gonna add a new connection. After that, you should see it's here. So some of the other ones are ran already here. But anyway, so the server name is just localhost. Our username is SA. The password is the one I created. So mine is like my GTC123 dollar sign. Okay. So it's case sensitive, make sure that it's correctly typed. And then just click connect. Hopefully everything goes Good. So now we're connected. And then you will see that if you don't see this screen right here, okay? If you don't see it, um, I will show you where it is. So let's say that you don't see, you only see something like that. You can double click on this, you know, local host here. If you double click on it, you, it this page should load. If, if you still don't, still don't see it, you can just right click on it and go to manage, okay? And then so here, on this screen, you will see that um, the system databases are here. We don't have eventual works yet. If you do see it, it should be listed right here. So now we need to go and restore that database. So you click on here, the restore, and then here on the restore from, I want to pick the one that says backup file. That's the .bak. And from the path is, as you can see, if you navigate here, you see that all these bind, these are links in here. These are links or directories inside that container only. This is not on your Macintosh. It's in the Docker container, okay? So we need to copy that um, eventual works to the var directory inside the opt directory inside mssql directory inside data, okay? So basically this link right here. That's, we want to put it which is why in my notes, we need to copy that to that location. Um, let's go to Docker terminal here and scroll up or do the Docker PS and then find this ID right here. Okay, you need to copy this ID. So just select that, copy it, and then paste it right in here. Okay, I paste it right in here and uh, make sure it looks like that. <clears throat> the colon is in here, okay, it's important. And then um, now we just copy this whole command. Copy it. And then we go to the terminal. And then right here, we're gonna paste it right in here. Okay, so here is the command. Uh, I'm copying the eventual works and from the downloads directory. If you move it to a different place, make sure you put them to that location. But my example is coming from the downloads directory. I'm gonna copy that over to this container, okay, at this location in the data directory and hit enter. Okay, so that shouldn't take long. Now we're done. Now, if you go back to the studio and if it's not here yet, you can just, you know, go back again and then try again. Hopefully it will show up in there. Okay, so now you see that the database has been copied over to the data directory. So we just need to select that direct database and click OK. And it should do its magic here. And then finally, we're just gonna click Restore. Okay, Restore. And if it's successful, it's running over here, it's still doing its thing. Then we should have access to that database from there now on. So here we are, we're good to go. and. If it's not shown here yet, you can try to reload or something. If it's not loaded here, you can close this screen here to exit out and then just go to the um, server database here. And you should now see eventually what's being installed and attached to your database. So now we're good to go.
all right? So now, let's say that I'm going to, you know, turn off my laptop. So once you turn off your laptop or your program, or if you turn off uh, a Docker, if you quit Docker, for example, if I quit Docker, okay, um, once that's off, I'm gonna turn on my terminal here as well. And then I'm gonna go and rerun my um, Docker again. Uh, where did I put it? I didn't put in the thing there. It's my applications. I should have put it. So here's the Docker Edge I used. I'm gonna double click to run that again. And it's still doing it, it's still running. And so while well, that's uh, still booting, I'm gonna go ahead and click the terminal. And um, see, is it done? Okay, that's good. So now if I type in Docker again, you see that now that instance is gone. It's not active anymore. And if you try to connect to that instance through the SQL Server, it's not gonna be able to find it. So it's not gonna work like SQL Server is not there. It's trying to connect and it's gonna fail, right? So here again, if I go and connect, you should not find it. So you have a connection here. Okay, so now if I type in docker ps-a, and you will see that I have instances created earlier. So this is the one that I created. Actually, there are two of them. Um, but the one that I created that we added the Adventure Works to was this ID here. So you just have to remember which ID you use, okay, uh, to activate it. So right now it says it's exited. I mean, we quit that. Um, already about 10 minutes ago or so it says. So I'm gonna go and restart this again. So you just have to remember this ID. So if you copy this ID here to memory, and then I'm gonna go a, um, to here, Docker, restart, and then paste in that ID, okay, and hit enter. Now that Docker um, container should be active now. So here we go, it's active again, right? And then now I'm gonna go back to SQL Server um, Studio over here and reconnect again. So you see that now I'm able to connect it back and my database is, everything here is still retained, okay? So if you don't remember that ID or if you happen to delete it and it's gone, then you have to start the whole process again, You know, recreate a container and then copy that over again to this container um, and then connect it to your um, database that system that way. So that's what you need to do in order to um, use Adventure Works again. Thank you.